Hello, you're watching People's Dispatch, and today we're going to be talking about a very important election that is set to take place in France on the 10th of April. Now, this is a presidential election, of course, which determines the future of France in the coming years. A lot of candidates from the left, center, and right, one of the most hotly contested elections in recent times, and a lot of political and social issues are at stake as well. So to talk more about this, we have with us Aurelie Dinara, who is a feminist researcher, a, a student of history, as well as a political activist based in Paris. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Could you first talk a bit about uh, the current political situation right now? We know that the first round is scheduled for uh, April 10th. There's a lot of campaigning happening. Polls show that there are a lot of changes happening in terms of preferences in recent times. So could you maybe first give us an outline of the current situation? Sure. Well, uh, so as you said, there will be two rounds. So the French people will be uh, called to vote on the presidential election on the 10th of April, and then on the, the second round on the 24th of April, I think. Um, and they will be called to, to decide whether to uh, reappoint the current uh, president, Emmanuel Macron, who's a center right uh, president, or to uh, choose an alternative between the 11 other candidates that are present in this uh, in this election. Uh, and this election is taking place, obviously, in a context uh, marked by the Ukrainian war, as you can imagine, but also in a context that is still uh, marked by uh, the COVID crisis, and also by a very deep uh, social and ecological crisis uh, in France. Um, I think it's important to understand basically what are the issues um, before the voters uh, in this presidential election to mention that uh, the, the past five years, so the, 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 the years um, of Macron's uh, presidential term have been really characterized by um, a, an important impoverishment of the lower classes and the working classes uh, in France and by increasing um, inequalities. Uh, the, the, the French government has been uh, accelerating a process of neoliberalization of French policies that already started uh, something like 40 years ago. Uh, they have been uh, sort of implementing a project of bottom-up um, redistribution uh, of sort of social and fiscal uh, counter-revolution, if you want, basically uh, cuts in uh, in the public budget, cuts in uh, public services, uh, and dismantling of the social state, while at the same time um, giving money to flow to big firms and the richest, richest people uh, in France. Um, so, and, and there's another an, another um, point to mention uh, about this, this sort of the the the, the, the current uh, issues and the current landscape, which is the inaction of the French state during the five uh, previous years regarding the ecological uh, crisis. Uh, in fact, the French state has been uh, convicted. Uh, several times in the past few years uh, for by, by French courts uh, for uh, climate inaction. Um, and so this is basically uh, what's, uh, what's uh, you know, the landscape that the uh, French people have um, to deal with right now. Uh, the result of these uh, policies of the French government are, uh, as I said, growing inequalities, uh, and uh, an impoverishment of the of the of the of the population, and a very important climate emergency. So we have basically more and more uh, uh, reports and surveys of different NGOs and associations that keep telling us every year uh, how. Uh, the richest people in France are getting richer and richer. Uh, to, to give you just uh, a few examples, uh, the five richest billionaires in France now own as much as 27 million of the poorest people in France. Uh, this is, I think, very significant. It, it has been growing uh, uh, worse in the past years. Uh, we have a, a situation now where 12 million people in France uh, are unable to heat their homes properly. Eight million people depend on food assistance, 
4 million people uh, are poorly housed in France. There are 300,000 people who are uh, roofless. Uh, and uh, something like 6 million people registered to the unemployment, uh, to the, the job center in France. And probably even more than that uh, is the, the number of people who are actually jobless. Um, the, the billions or the hundreds of billions of euros that have been spent uh, since the COVID crisis by the French government went mostly to big firms and the richest people um, in, uh, in France. Um, and aside from this uh, economic and social um, sort of emergency, uh, there is also this, uh, this, this very bad climate emergency. In France, the summers ha have been uh, getting more hot every, every year. Uh, we have been having more floods uh, and fires uh, every year. And uh, the, the, the last, um, you know, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the report of this uh, IPCC uh, shows that the consequences of, of global warming are going to be devastating for uh, human populations among uh, the world, including in France. Um, and yet what's going on now in these weeks, just before the, before the election, uh, as in the past few years actually, is that these um, ecological and social issues are almost completely eclipsed from uh, the uh, public and political debate, the media uh, debate, which are uh, very much centered on questions like immigration, uh, Islam, and um, supposed uh, insecurity in France. So yes, basically I would say that uh, the French uh, voters will have to decide basically uh, in April when they go voting uh, between uh, another five years of neoliberal and authoritarian policies with one of the candidates of the right or um, a, a, different, uh, a different road towards wealth redistribution and uh, climate action. Uh, if they choose to go with the left. Absolutely. Right. Uh, you gave a very comprehensive outline of the kind of crisis France is facing. So in this context, I just wanted to come to uh, Emmanuel Macron himself, who, uh, you know, who's been, who's faced, of course, a lot of crisis. We know the Yellow West protests that took place. There have been climate protests. There's been widespread dissatisfaction among the working class with the way uh, his, uh, poli his COVID-19 policies were. And we know that Throughout the past few years, there were massive protests by trade unions on the issue of pension reforms, for instance. Despite all this, how has he been sort of, what is, what is his current support base in terms of what is what are the kind of voters who are still gravitating towards him despite the various extent of social crisis that we have? Well, uh, unfortunately <laughs> for the people, the working classes and the, the lower classes, uh, Emmanuel Macron is actually polling, uh, he's very probably going to be re-elected. At least he's the favorite candidate for, for uh, the, the election in April. He's polling around 28% right now. Um, I think it's important to mention that actually in France at the moment, the right, the different right wing candidates, if you sum them up, uh, amount to something like 75% of the polling, which is pretty bad. And Macron uh, is getting 28% of these, uh, of these uh, voting intentions. Um, and I think this is uh, due to uh, the fact that Macron, basically his uh, popularity uh, rate uh, was pretty bad after he got elected. When he got elected, he's popularity rate was already not amazing. And then it decreased a lot, especially during the Gilets, the movement of the Gilets Jaunes, you know, the Yellow Vests, who, uh, which started in uh, late 2018 and which went on actually uh, for two or three years. It was very intense in the first year and then people kind of forgot it was still going on, but actually they, people were still mobilizing despite very intense repression. Um, and so his popularity was, 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 uh, was uh, exceptionally, exceptionally uh, bad. Uh, probably the only other president who had the worse uh, popularity than him 
um, in, in, in the past in France was François Hollande, the socialist party candidate who was president, uh, president just before Macron. Um, and so unfortunately, um, during the, the, the COVID crisis and especially late, uh, lately with the Ukrainian uh, war, Macron has been able to go up again a little bit in, in his popularity um, uh, rates. Uh, he has been playing a lot on this Ukrainian war, um, sort of uh, uh, playing a, the role of the, of the sort of uh, war leader, uh, wearing uh, sort of hoodies uh, like Zelensky. It was quite uh, ridiculous, but uh, these, these communication uh, sort of skills uh, uh, work to some extent. Um, so yeah, he's, he's, uh, he still has some quite good popularity, and uh, I think in terms of um, in terms of his chances to 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 win this election, he is very much advantaged by the reshaping of the pol political landscape in France in the past five years. Because, uh, as you may know, in France uh, the political landscape, which used to be historically dominated by a center left and a center right party, the, the Socialist Party and the Republican sort of ex gaullist uh, uh, party, um, they have been. Um, decreasing very much in the voting, uh, in the in the votes and in the in the polls, um, and uh, we have uh, some some new political parties uh, that have emerged, especially Emmanuel Macron's uh, Parti La République En Marche uh, that he launched in 2017, just before being uh, elected. Uh, uh, five years ago, uh, and which basically managed to capture votes from the center right and from the center left, um, uh, sort of um, uh, focusing his uh, his campaign in 2017 on a slogan saying, I am uh, neither left wing nor right wing. Um, but I'm both. And basically this uh, strategy has, has been uh, very efficient and uh, he is still, even though it was obviously after he got elected that he was neither left nor left and that he was very much a center right neoliberal extremist, uh, he managed to uh, stabilize his, uh, his, uh, his, his power and influence and networks. And he's still getting a lot of political staff and votes from the Parti Socialiste, Parti Socialiste the Socialist Party, sorry, which is uh, polling very, very low right now. Um, and just the last point on this, he's also, Macron is also obviously um, favored by uh, the, the, the collapse of popularity of the left. Uh, uh, we, we may get back to this uh, issue later. And the um, increasing fragmentation of the right, even though uh, the, the, the right and the far right has been um, uh, increasing, uh, has had increasing popularity in France, they are more fragmented than they used to be. And this is sort of uh, favoring, for favoring him for this election. Absolutely. Right. So in this context, of course, a lot of the media attention has been focusing on the right. That's where all the stories, uh, you know, all the media reports basically come from about Eric Zemmour, Marine Le Pen facing a challenge from uh, Eric Zemmour, who's further to her right, and the kind of uh, discourse that has been going around, uh, going by these candidates, which is, you know, there's racism, there's xenophobia, there's a hatred of outsiders. So uh, could you also maybe take us through some of the social contexts which have actually led to such support for these kind of candidates and this kind of viewpoint? Yes, so the social context is basically what I already mentioned about the increasing uh, inequalities um, and the uh, impoverishment of uh, working classes and uh, lower classes. Basically, the far right in France has been uh, sort of uh, taking advantage uh, of what they call, um, or sort of trying to attract what they call the, the, the losers of globalization, uh, but also the populations who uh, live in uh, rural, the peripheries of France and the, the rural uh, regions of France, which, are, which have been uh, objectively more and more 
um, uh, isolated from the big urban centers of power in France. Uh, they have been um, uh, sort of isolated, uh, cut off from access to public services, hospitals, transports, and so on. And this has fueled uh, together with rising unemployment in some areas of uh, the French uh, population, this has fueled um, uh, a growing resentment and a growing popularity of this uh, far right. The, the historic uh, party of the far right in France, sorry, is um, the, the Front National, the Nationalist uh, National Front, which was rebranded a few years ago as uh, Rassemblement National, uh, which started growing, I think, in the 80s and managed to get to the second round of the, of the presidential election for the first time in 2002. Um, and then again, at the, at the last election in 2017, Marine Le Pen, the daughter of uh, uh, Jean-Marie Le Pen, who was the historic leader of that party, um, she uh, qualified for the second round of the, uh, of the election. And for the past uh, years, basically the media have been telling us that this was going to happen again now in 2022. Now, the only difference between now and 2017 is that there is a new far right party um, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the run to the election, uh, a party launched just a few months ago by Eric Zemmour, who is a um, um, former journalist, chronicler, and polemicist who got famous in the past years uh, for participating in uh, public uh, television shows. Uh, he is uh, particularly supported by Vincent Bolloré, who is one of the billionaires, the French billionaires who own a lot of media uh, in France. He is... Um, the candidate uh, of uh, racist, um, sort of um, security obsessed uh, uh, proposals. Uh, he is obsessed with Islam. He's an, an extreme misogynist. Um, and he has launched in a few months ago his uh, party called Reconquête. Uh, which attracted um, some small far right uh, and even neo-Nazi groups. At, it, at his meetings, you can say, see people who, 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 who basically raise their arms in, in, a, in, a, fascist, uh, in a fascist gesture. Um, and uh, he's now polling around um, 10 to 12 percent in the polls. So if you sum up these two, these two uh, parties, the, the, the Rassemblement National of Marine Le Pen and Eric Zemmour's uh, Reconquête, you get around 30% of the uh, voting intentions uh, right now in France, which is quite uh, worrying. Right. And of course, finally, the question of the left, we do know that this time the left is a bit more divided than the previous time, on the other hand, we do also see that Jean-Luc Melanchon has been uh, polling, that his polling numbers have significantly improved in uh, recent times as well. So could you maybe also take us through some of the policy frameworks that the left is pitching to the voters and how it appears and how it is different from the general consensus that the right brings? So as you said, um, there, was, uh, there, there has been a collapse uh, in uh, popularity of left-wing parties, a very significant collapse in the, past, uh, in the past five years, I would say. There are several reasons for this. One of the reasons is uh, the very disastrous uh, five-year presidential term of François Hollande prior to Macron's uh, term, who implemented neoliberal uh, policies against labor laws uh, and so on. Uh, it's also due in part to Macron launching his own party and capturing uh, votes and uh, political staff from the center left. Uh, it's due to also increasing increasingly high abstentionism in the uh, lower uh, working and uh, working classes in France. And it's uh, undeniably due to uh, the, the, the media, the discourse of the media 
uh, the media in France, there is a big democratic problem regarding the media because they are increasingly, there is an increasing concentration of the media uh, between the hands of a few billionaires. And these billionaires obviously favor uh, right wing and extreme right wing um, discourses and candidates. Um, but as you said, uh, there might not, it may not be completely lost for the left. And uh, Jean Luc Mélenchon has been uh, spectacularly uh, rising in the in the in the polls, in the voting intentions in the, in the past few weeks. Mm. Uh, his uh, his uh, party movement is uh, La France Insoumise, which was rebranded actually for this election, L'Union Populaire, and which is trying to propose a radically different uh, sort of uh, set of proposals than uh, these, uh, these uh, right-wing parties and trying to uh, advance proposals for uh, radical wealth redistribution and ecological uh, planning. So if you want, I can give you a few examples uh, of what, um, what uh, Jean-Luc Mélenchon and uh, Union Populaire are proposing. They are um, promising to raise the SMIC, which is the minimum income, uh, uh, working income in France, to 1,400 uh, euros. Um, they are proposing to uh, uh, bring back the uh, retirement age to 60 years old, whereas Macron and other candidates on the right are proposing to push it uh, to 65, 64, 65 years old. Um, they are also uh, proposing to tax very much to, 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 to implement an important tax on uh, the richest to basically seize anything above 12 million euros in inheritances and to use this money to fund a sort of autonomy, a youth income of above 1,000 euros for, uh, for, for, for the youngest who are uh, studying. Um, they also obviously uh, propose to make massive investments in renewable energies right. and uh, on um, renovating uh, houses. Uh, and they also one of one of their important uh, proposals is um, a, a reform of the French constitution. So basically, going to a, the sixth, sixth republic, republic right. uh, by um, basically organizing a constituent assembly, which will be uh, charged to write a new constitution, a more democratic constitution than the one uh, we currently have. So um, right now, Mélenchon uh, and the, the Union Populaire are polling around 14 to 15 percent. Um, five years ago, Mélenchon almost qualified to the second round of the elections with uh, above 19 percent of the of the votes. Um, they they really are clearly in a dynamic of um, of uh, improving this their, their 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 chances in this in this campaign. Uh, in the past months, they've been attracting an increasing number of uh, personalities from different associations, NGOs, intellectuals, uh, intellectuals uh, and uh, activists uh, from, uh, from, uh, from, from different, uh, from different uh, horizons, basically. Um, uh, last Sunday, they organized a big demonstration in Paris for the Sixth Republic and for a redistribution of uh, wealth. Uh, which attracted a, a very high number of people. There were uh, around 100,000 people who took to the streets uh, and who gathered in Place de la République uh, in Paris. And um, yes, yeah, so the, the, the feeling is that there is something going on there. There is a possibility that Mélenchon could be, um, could be passing to the second round of, the, of this election. And this obviously would... Um, would, uh, would would matter very much, even if Mélenchon then doesn't get elected um, against Macron. Uh, the fact of just being in the, at the second round would right. mean that we have two weeks of debate that instead of being centered on, on immigration and racial issues, uh, will be centered on social and ecological uh, issues. 
And uh, it means that uh, the, the, the next parliamentary elections that are going to take place in a few months, um, it will be more likely for the left to, uh, to, 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 to gain a higher scores in these elections and then to be able to uh, build uh, an opposition in the, in the parliament. And uh, I think it also means that um, the, the, the Mélenchon, the, the France Insoumise, Union Populaire will be in a better position to finally uh, sort of uh, start building a, a real important opposition uh, in France uh, to, 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 to make these uh, social and ecological struggles uh, alive uh, in, the, in the public uh, uh, debate in France. And I think this would be very important. Absolutely. Thank you so much for speaking to us on the various social contexts that are currently in France right now, the processes that are taking place. We'll hopefully come back to you in a few weeks as well after the election for an analysis of what happens there. Thank you very much. That's all we have time for today. Keep watching People's Dispatch.